I bet it's not as hot as where it was used working today, most of it. Uh, maybe with some, some exceptions. But uh, we'll make it. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Psalm 1 and 1. I think the air conditioner's over. <laughs> that night's <is> fan. <laughs> Find it what it is. God is so good. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, if you notice verse 1, verse 1 is saying things that uh, God's people don't do. These, verse 1 says, The man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, or in the way of the sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But then he goes to verse 2. Then he starts talking about the things that they do. God's people do. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And then he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The beautiful three verses. My subject tonight is the way of the righteous. Pray with me. Father, bless tonight. God, I pray that you'll bless this service. Bless the message, the word of God. Give us strength tonight to live by. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. God bless you. Be seated. The way of the righteous. Oh, look here, fam. Jesus, son of man. Be blowing my notes up. There we go. There we go. The way of the righteous. We're in a, in a world. I've preached a lot about the condition of the world uh, the last, well, good while for now, for that matter. Uh, <clears throat> things that's going on in this world that you and I don't like and we don't, we're not a part of. And we're, we are of this world or we are, we are in the world but we're not of the world. We don't delight in the things that the world delights in. When God said, when the scripture said God so loved the world that he gave, he does love the world, but he does not love the condition that our world has gotten into. He loves the people. He loves everybody. Our world is speeding out of control, and it's picking up speed. It's in high gear. It's going crazy. You got nightly TV news. You got broadcast radios and TV. You got sitcoms, daytime talk shows on your radios, and some outspoken celebrities that are leading people down a road of tolerance for sin. Our world has came to the point place where. Anything goes. As I said Sunday morning, there's no gray area. It's either black or it's white. It's sin or it's not. You know, it's not almost wrong. Anything that is uh, uh, not right is wrong. It's either fully right or it's fully wrong. And our world has built this tolerance you know everybody they want you to be everybody to be tolerant of, of things people and and I agree if you're going to be tolerant of anything do it with people show mercy but not in agreeing with their lifestyle the things that they do you can't do that we're living in a time that uh, everybody uh, the, the system I keep using that word everybody but that's not the word I want to use the system is, uh, is trying to cause us to be tolerant and not preach sin or not preach in any area that would cause anyone to be offended. Come on. Come on. You know, I hate to say back when I came into church, when, when, that 
because it was so much different then. It, it, it wasn't like it is now. I mean, the same God, same Holy Ghost, better be the same sermon. And, and, but things were different, you know. Today, Brother Mark and I talked about today, you've got to document everything. Then you've got to have a degree in everything to even preach. Because people don't understand, bless God, I said so. That just don't hardly work anymore. You know, used to, it wasn't no big deal. You know, preacher just preached against dipping stuff, you just quit dipping stuff. You didn't want to know why is it wrong to dip stuff. See what I'm saying? But you're not that way anymore. Whatever you're preaching today, you've got to have, you've got to have it documented. You know, he, here's the reason for it. Now, now, I'm not criticizing that. I'm not saying that's bad in itself. Nothing wrong with having that kind of knowledge. But what about us old poor boys that don't have that knowledge? And what about us old poor boys that still got the old attitude that because I preached it, that's why it's not right. And, uh, and so, but we're in a world now that wants, to, wants us to, to be tolerant. Uh, with everything that, that many people throughout our, throughout our uh, world and, and throughout North America has viewed these uh, sinful people, just uh, the word I guess that I'm trying to use is, is grossly sinful people that's in our land today as glamorous and entertainers. And, and, and that's what the world the way the world views these kind of people, uh, the, uh, especially here in North America, uh, that, that these people that are so sinful, and, and it seems like the worse they, the longer they, uh, the more they can get involved in, uh, it seems like the more popular they are. Sister Creasy, take that thing and tell whoever that is I'm preaching. Or cut it off or do something. I'm sorry, y'all. I normally cut that thing off. But uh, they, they want us to, to, to see these people as entertainers and, and just really just uh, and, and glamorous while the world has painted a picture of the church and painted a picture of, of the Christian, you, as weird. Because, you know, you live like you live. Brother Mark was telling me he was listening to a talk show. I think it was Brother Mark telling me. And, and uh, this one guy was talking that, that, you know, he believed in God, he believed in the Bible, and so forth, so on. And this other guy didn't. And they were kind of talking back and forth. And I believe it, the, the bottom line was the man that did believe told the other one, said, but you know, said, if when we get to eternity, or some words to this effect, when we do in this life, and there ain't no God, and there ain't no heaven, what have you lost? And said, you built a family, you built a family of Christians, you took your church, your, your wife to church, your children to church, you raised them in church, you raised them to believe the truth, you raised them just like they, they should be raised, got down to the judgment, there's no God, but what did you lose? You raised a beautiful family, right. a healthy family. Yes, sir. You, know, you, you don't cheat on everybody. Right. You don't smoke and chew and go with women that do. You don't do none of this. So what have you lost? Right. So I'm saying tonight, to, as, as these entertainers, so-called entertainers, they view the church as weird. You know, we don't paint our hair three or four different colors. We don't paint our face one side blue and the other side orange. Are you, we don't pull our clothes off and wear them backwards. I would say we don't even wear pajamas to Walmart, but some of you might. These things we just don't do, and they call that weird. You, know, you, watch, you watch a football game on your TV, or, or if you go to a football game, they got all kinds of different makeup paint paintings on. Depends on what team you're rooting for. They got their face painted up to match the team. Are you understanding? They really look weird. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is weird. Because they ain't got enough sense to know that team is going to win or lose. And you got to wash all that junk off. 
And they say their church is weird because we dress modest, we dress neat, we wear coats and ties when it's too hot. Are you, are you understand? And, and we don't do all this kind of stuff. We don't paint ourselves up like a Christmas tree. We don't, we don't hang stuff off in our nose and in our ears and Lord in heaven only knows where else. We don't do all of that, but they say we're weird. These entertainers that I'm talking about, maybe that some of your children or your youth may even watch or enjoy these entertainers are literally trying to tear the fiber right out of our young people. And they're having a lot of success at it. And they say we're weird. But the principles that Jesus taught are true. They've been tried and they've been tested. And they come out true every time. They've been proven. The, 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 uh, the uh, principles that Jesus taught us can carry us and will carry us all the way through. His teaching, the Lord's teaching is unpopular in our society. It's not very popular because about, about a lot of people, a lot of people it is, but a lot of people it's not. And because Jesus is teaching, he's unlike anybody else, Unlike any other uh, religious leader, if I could use that phrase, his teaching demands a change of lifestyle. He don't, he, he, he's not one of these teachers. His, his words, his, his principles doesn't teach live any way you want to and you'll be okay. That's not what he, teach, he taught. His teaching is you, uh, if, you, if your brother offends you, uh, you forgive him. His teaching is if he slaps you on the chin, give him the other one. His teaching is if you want to get up, you got to get down. And, and so, he, his, so that teaching is not popular. And, and so they built, this, they built this tolerant situation, this tolerant ordeal. His principles have been proven. His teaching is, is not very popular because it demands me to change. When I got the Holy, when I got the Holy Ghost, I, I just thought you're supposed to change. I, just, I didn't think you're supposed to live like the world anymore. I didn't think you're supposed to dress like the world. You, oh, I'm going to blow your mind now. I even quit going swimming in a bathing suit. That's right. If I go swimming, I go swimming in my blue jeans. I, oh, now I, I do cut the pockets out of them <laughs> so the water won't wake me to the bottom. You saw oh, that silly. That's what the world told me. That's exactly what the world told me. Amen. Told me I was weird. Well, it ain't nothing wrong, but you just go ahead and get caught doing it, and they'll point a finger back at you. Oh, I need to, I know, I know. It's not popular because it demands me to change. When I come to church and got in church, got the Holy Ghost, I quit going to the horse shows on Sunday. There ain't nothing wrong with the horse show. I don't misunderstand. There ain't nothing wrong with swimming. If you can do it modestly. I'm just, I'm an old goat. I understand. And nothing wrong with going. I just quit going to the horse barns on Sunday. I just figured he could fast if I could. So I didn't go to the horse barn. I went to the church. Got up, went to the house of God. I, I'm weird. The world says I'm weird. My, but the Lord's teaching is right. It's solid. Sin is at its all-time high. Mom and dad, grandmother, granddad, listen to me. Sin is at an all-time high tonight. It's rampant all over our world. It stares you in the face when you walk down the street, when you walk into Walmart, when you go to your job. Sin is staring you in the face, and it's challenging you, and it's challenging our young people. Sin is, 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 uh, is, is around the world. The, the America is, 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 is dipping further and further into sin every day of, of our life. It's at a high, highest it's ever been. I read you statistics Sunday about divorce level, about all the stuff. I read to you how, how I read how the, the things have been changing, but Jesus Christ, mark it down, is still alive and well, and he's still in control. He's not lost any of his power, and I'm going to tell you, honey, he's coming back just like 
This book says he's coming. It's not going to be a commentary. It's not going to be somebody's opinion that don't believe fat meat's greasy. It's going to be the word of God. He's coming just like the Bible said. Amen. In a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to, in the cloud, in the air, to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be. It's going to happen. Amen. It's old fashioned. This apostolic message is old fashioned. It came across with the apostles. It started on the day of Pentecost when it was fully come. They were all in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It happened. It's going to happen again. That's the way it's going to happen. If it happens, that's the way it'll happen. Peter said, this is that that the prophet Joel talked about. Brother Tennis said, if you're this ain't got a that, you better get something else. I said, the world has provided for us an artificial antidote. For sin. Drugs. Drug it down. Just get you some pills. Now I'm not against prescription medicine. Don't, don't say that though. I take prescription medicine myself. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the illegal drugs that makes you feel like King Kong. You walk like a Tennessee walking horse trying to get along. Alcohol. Drink it down. Drink your problems to death. Use a needle. Rehabilitation programs. I'm not against some of these things. Uh, jails. Throw them in jail. Juvenile homes. Abortion clinics. All kinds of stuff that the world is providing. Some of these things are okay. If you got a, you got someone that's in a in a rehab and it's helping them, praise God. But Jesus didn't do it that way. Jesus is still the answer. The the man, the wild man of Gadara ran and fell at his feet and worshipped him. My God, if we could get some more worship in some of these apostolic churches, we could get people off the pews. If we could get them off the fishing bank, off the ball fields. If we could get our young people off the ball fields and, and out of the entertainment. I'm not against these things. I'm, don't misunderstand me. And I'm telling you, if we could get that and get... We could see a lot more happening in our churches. I hadn't even got on that sermon yet. Well, I'll, I'll try to get there. I'll try to get there. If I can. Our society has lowered its crime rate. They say crime is going down. But if you church search it out, they've made certain behaviors no longer a crime. So the rate has gone down. Are you understanding? They raised the student test scores. They're getting smarter, but they lowered the standards. That for I could pass it. Are you understanding? Our world's got this artificial antidote. People are not getting smarter. They're lowering the standards. Teachers don't have to have as much going for them now as they used to, so I'm told. They're, 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 what's that uh, uh, test score? So I'm told. This is the results of people that don't know God. This is the result of people that do not know the Lord. So they're making all kinds of situations seem to be doing better. Politicians will tell you anything, honey. And either side of the aisle. You know, I'm, I'm Republican from my nose to my toe. But I got enough sense to know they ain't right. In a lot of things. They just want to vote. 
Well, I, ooh, my daughter turned Facebook off. They won't vote for me. So uh, Ezekiel 16:49 said, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and an abundance of idleness. My, have you ever seen a world so idle? People won't work. Couldn't give them a job. Talk to somebody. I believe it was today or yesterday. Can't hire anybody to work. People don't want a job. They want a paycheck, Come on. but they don't want a job. We're living in that a, an abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. God sees two groups of people. I'm getting to my message. Righteous people and unrighteous people. That's what God sees. We look at things different than God. I'm not going to go into none of that. I, I look at things probably different than you. You look at things different than I will. I'm sure. Because we're two different types of people. But God sees righteous people and sees unrighteous people. Matthew 6 and 24 said, No man can serve two masters. Can't do that. <laughs> a little humor. Would it be okay for you? That's why they say you can't have but one wife. Because you can't serve two masters. But I don't think that's what Jesus had in mind. Can't serve two masters, for either you'll hate the one and love the other, or else you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. You can't serve God in money. Riches. You can't serve God in that way. Look at what uh, uh, 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. This is the people that God sees, righteous people and uh, unrighteous people. Now look at what? Look at what the righteous people do not do. That was the title of my sermon. Psalm 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorpion. They, righteous people do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You have to be careful. Solomon said, where no counsel is the people fall. So you have to be careful. It must be godly counsel. Godly counsel. You have to be careful walking with the ungodly. Because if you get too close, I'm not saying you, you, you can't fellowship, but I'm saying it has to be, you have to have caution. If you're going to be a child of God, you've got to watch yourself. You can't get persuaded by the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly. Ungodly people will tell you anything. Well, you understand? They you know, I, I, I heard, I heard, I heard a man with my ears before I had any other to. Him. I heard him say. He told a young man. The young man was married, had two children. Told this man, I'm unhappy. The man should have just kept his mouth shut and sent the boy to me. He said, well, then leave. Stupid counseling. You don't find in the scripture you can leave because you're unhappy. My Lord, man. Who said you're supposed to be happy with an attitude like that? I'm unhappy. No, you're selfish. Oh, I I'm just telling the truth. That's, that is ungodly counsel. And that's why we have some, a lot of problems that we have. Uh, in this present world, uh, as he said to him, said, uh, I think I missed the page here. Excuse me, just a second. I can't. I can't. I don't have enough to miss. I gotta. I, I gotta get it off. You will walk in the counsel of the ungodly. All right? Solomon said, "First, no counsel. The people fall. Godly counsel. Advice is cheap. Everybody's got advice, but most of it is ungodly advice. 
most of it, everybody's got an opinion. Most of it is ungodly. It's based on anything contrary to the Word of God. We got to live by the Word of God. I'm trying to hurry. I know it's hot. I know y'all are hot. I'm hot. But that's okay. Good counsel is based on the Word of God. If you got a problem and you come to me and ask me, I'm going to give you what this gives you. And if that hurts, it just hurts. That's good counsel. Many people have listened to ungodly counsel. Wonder what Eve thought when the ungodly counsel told her that God didn't mean what he said. How many have you ever heard of or heard say things like, well, I know the Bible said da-da-da, but it didn't really mean that. You understand? That's ungodly counsel. Who am I to say the Bible don't mean what it says? That's ungodly counsel. It's not based. What I give you better be based on the Word of God. Because if I give you some ungodly counsel and it costs you your marriage or your job or your family, then me and you both are in trouble because I gave you the wrong counsel. Many people have listened to that. Rehoboam listened to the wrong counsel. And the old prophet, he talked about much. We don't talk about him much. Remember, he, he was the guy, he was the prophet that went down, wasn't he, went down to curse Bethel. And, and, and we got down there, and, and, and we started back, or the altar was, and we started back. God had told him, don't come back the same way, and don't eat no food, don't drink no water. Just go down there and tell, tell, tell the king what I said, and get out of Dodge. And he goes down there, and he, he delivers the message. He, 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 he delivers the, the message of the cursing, and, 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 and the king said, uh, come to my house and dine and, and have food and drink. He said, oh, no, no, uh-uh. He said, uh, God told me not to do that. I can't do that. And, and so he wants to leave, and, and he meets another man, and this man said, to, asked him to come in and, and have a meal, and he, and he refused, and, and God said, but I'm a prophet too. And said, God told me to tell you it's okay. It's in the Bible. And so this prophet that God has talked about, he says, well, okay, because God said that, and, and he goes on down, and he eats and enjoys his meal. I can't remember exactly what all it was, was, but anyway, and then when he gets ready to leave, he meets a lion, and you ain't going to believe what happened. The lion killed him because he listened to ungodly counsel. You listen to somebody, if he crosses the word of God, you don't bid him God's feet. If he teaches you a Trinitarian doctrine, a three God, God the Father being a person, God the Son being a person, God the Holy Ghost being a person, I don't care if he's got diamond rings on his fingers, on his toes, and on his nose, don't receive him into your house. He's a false prophet. There's no such thing as a person of God the Father or a person of God the Holy Ghost. He don't exist. If he did, there'd be three mammies. Three, what were the three virgin births? Is that what we're talking about? No, we're talking about one God, the person, Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about. Don't listen to the wrong counsel. Or stand, he said, we don't, uh, God's people do not stand in the way of the sinners. What does that mean? The righteous refuses to fellowship sinners without caution. I didn't say don't fellowship, but you got to use caution. You got to be careful. They can sway you the wrong direction. They can pull you in the wrong direction. Close fellowship is impossible for a child of God and a sinner can't get close. You can be friends. You don't have to hurt people. But the closeness can't be there because see, because people that love God two, you take two people that love God you take me and, and Brother Michael over here love God. Well, we, we can fellowship and talk about it because I can fellowship with him because I know he's going to talk about the things of God. I can't fellowship with somebody 
that I know is not a Christian close because their conversation, my conversation is different. I, I used to didn't even get invited to family reunions. I'm serious. I'm serious with a heart attack. My son-in-law sitting back there. Joel talk, asked me one time, was it work? He said, did you go to the to the your family cookout Saturday or Sunday? I said, no, I didn't know that about He said, you didn't know. Am I telling the truth, Joel? Hey, you didn't know that your families all came from Dallas and they met at your brother's house in, in Frazier and, and they had a big cookout? I said, no. I wasn't even invited. Well, I probably wouldn't have went. Because I don't talk their trash, I don't drink. I don't drink their their uh, booze. Oh, you understand? I don't smoke their, their cigarettes. I don't sit around and breathe their secondhand smoke. I probably wouldn't have got invited anyway, brother. Did but it did kind of hurt me. You know, did, it did kind of. But you know what? I can't fellowship. I can I can fellowship. I can talk with people that don't know the Lord. I don't I don't snob them. But, but we can't walk hand in hand because you can't walk with two. Two can't walk together unless they agree together. That's good stuff, y'all. I'm giving you good stuff. You can't walk together if you don't agree together. Those who have similar interests. That's why me and Sister Christy have been getting along 53 years. We've got similar interests. She loves church. I love church. She loves to preach. I love to preach. You're talking about preaching a devotion Tuesday night. That woman preached a devotion. She preached a sermon. Broke this place loose, man. Like a siphon. Come through here, the Holy Spirit. Here. John 15, 19 said, ye were, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. John 15, 19. I'm sorry. Yeah. His own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. We're in this world. It's a beautiful world. But we're not part of the world system. We go, we fish in their lakes. We ride their roller coasters when you go to an amusement park. We eat their steaks. We eat their catfish. When, when those boys catch something and bring them to me. But we're not part of the world. The worldly entertainments, the worldly situation, we're not part of that because we're of God's people. We don't sit in the seat of the scornful. I read all this in Psalm 1. When a Christian sits in the seat of, a, of the scornful, that's the seat of criticism. When Christians go to criticize and mocking, it could be a result of ungodly counsel. Not being counseled the right way. Not learned the right way. Proverbs 13, 1 said, A wise son heareth his father's instructions, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Are oh, you understanding? I hope I'm making sense to us. Proverbs 24, 9, The thoughts of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to man, or to men. Proverbs 19, 29 said, Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the backs of fools. <laughs> so what does righteous people do? I've told you all that, that what, God, uh, what unrighteous people do or what righteous people don't do, okay, what righteous people do do, they delight in the law of God. Yes. Don't preach it too hard for me. Go ahead and preach against my sin. Yeah. I don't want nobody to tell me I'm okay when I know good well myself I'm not. Yeah. Well, I know I'm not living. I, I talked to a good friend of mine. He, he was a good Baptist man, fine man. He, he didn't do a lot of lot of unnecessary junk. I, to my knowledge, he was at work, and he, he was running the uh, the uh, place where you check out twos, two room. And I, I was walking in there, and I was getting some stuff ready to go. I was going to load my truck and go out and do some work out of, outside the shop. And we were talking, and, and he was talking and, and asked me, had I ever been saved? Or da, da, da. And I said, yeah, I was I used to go to church. I used to be saved. He said, well, you're still saved. I said, oh, Lord. I said, Lord, I hope heaven ain't full of people like me. He said, oh, you're saved. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. He said, you're going to heaven. And I just kind of walked off. Because I knew that wasn't true. You can't, you know, uh, the, the, the God's people delights 
in this. We delight in it. Just go ahead and preach it to me. If I don't live it, it ain't your fault. Go home and preach it. I'm not going to quit coming to church. I'm not going to quit paying my tithes. You just go ahead and preach to me. and Maybe one day it'll get in my big head. Think a whole lot more of you if you preach to me than I would be if you just let me live any old way I want to live. And be called the same God. So, uh, the righteous people, they delight in the law of God. God's word is an influence to the righteous people. It influences us. The Bible is the source of my faith. I look to the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible is our weapon. The word of God is. It's my foundation for a source of knowing. If I need to know something, it's in the book. I can find an answer in the Bible for any problem that I have. Now, it may not be thus and thus and thus, but if you'll read it enough, you'll see it in its there. It will answer your problem. It's my source, it's my weapon, it's my, it's my fundamental source of knowing. 119.9, wherewithal shall a man uh, cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So it's a source of knowing. It helps me to know. It's a source of my salvation. The word of God is. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That's James 1.21. And so the Bible is all of that. It's my source of my blessings. If I want to be blessed, get my head in the book. James 125. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. I can't forget. I don't want to forget where I come from. I don't want to forget where I'm going. I want the Word of God to be a part of me. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, the psalmist said, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will keep thy statues. Oh, forsake of me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the Word of God? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thee. Thy commandments. I'm just about to read the, the close. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Hide the word of God. Read it. Study it. Every day. Every day of your life, you ought to read something from the word of God. Amen. Open it up. If you don't, if you don't follow suit like to the uh, Bible reading charts, if you if you don't want to do that, if, that, if that's, that's your concern, uh, if you don't want to do that, open that book up somewhere and read something from the Word of God every day. It, it's your strength. It's your salvation. It's your life. It's your blessings. It's your. Let's see what else we don't have over here. I, want, I just want to tell you, it's the source of my faith. I can read the Bible. It's my weapon. It's my, it's my righteousness. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Paul said, study, study, study. Just like you would if you was in a high school uh, classroom and going to have to take a test. You'd study. You'd study. Read it over and over and over and over. To get it in your head. Study to, to show thyself approved unto God a workman that need him not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We can only know joy and strength of the word of God if we're in the word of God. I can't tell you how strong the word of God is like you could know how it is if you get your head into it. Then, you know, what was it? Uh, who was it? It just got down. I don't have it. But something comes to was it said? Somebody said, uh, we believe because of what you've said, but now, now not just because of what you said, but now we've experienced it ourselves. It's the way I was. The way I was. 
I already knew the Word of God was strong, but I didn't. But when I got in the church and started experiencing it myself, made it different. And so, so that's what the Word of God does. It's, it, you show yourself approved. Uh, you won't, I, I'll never know joy of, I won't know joy of the Word of God until I get the Word of God in my heart. I can know the joy of a lot of things, but not the Word of God. I, I, don't even, I can't even know the strength of the Word of God. Not by, not by your sermon. Brother Mark does an excellent job and, and, and I just can't keep up with him because uh, I'm slow. Slow to learn. But I can't draw strength unless I know. That's why you see people jump up when somebody's preaching. You know why? They get that. They know what that person's talking about. And they draw strength from that situation. I can't know strength until I know him. And when I know him, just like my wife told us last night, when I know him, then the devil can't turn me around. Because I know him then. Psalm 1978, uh, let the proud be ashamed, for they dwell perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate on thy precepts. That's what I want to do. David compared the righteous with a tree planted by the river of water. You know why it was a river of water? Because it would draw moisture, even in a dry season. Like, to, like today, it would be drawing moisture. And you know why I used the word plant? Now, this is just me, okay? I didn't look this up in somebody's dumb book. This is just me. You know why he said planted? Because when you plant something, you intend for it to grow. You don't take a seed out there and till your ground and plant your seed or seeds. We're saying, oh, well, I'm just going to, I ain't got nothing else to do with these things. I'm just going to plant it. No, you're doing it because you're thinking and hoping. That seed's going to go. You don't just broadcast. You plant it in a certain place. A certain way. Are you understanding? The Word of God, we plant it because it's going to grow. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm planting some seed. I'm expecting to see a harvest of what I'm saying to you tonight. I'm expecting you to go home scratching your head and saying, you know, that old boy was right. That's exactly what the Bible teaches us not to do or to do. See, not only does the Bible teach us not to do some things, it teaches us some things we need. And those are to get into the Word of God. Sister Creasy, would you come over to the piano for me, please? Uh, so he compared the, uh, the righteous with a tree planted by the river. Now, not only do we produce love, I've heard we love, love, and I believe it. I believe it. I believe you win people by loving people. I believe you love, and you win them to yourself by loving that person. I ain't saying you got to empty your wallet, you empty your checkbook. I, I'm not saying that. There's other ways to love people. But let me tell you something. There's a little bit more to it than love. Uh, not only do we produce love when we get the Holy Ghost, but According to Galatians 5, we produce the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And when the fruit of the Spirit is there, then people will recognize that fruit. Just like recognize an apple tree or a pear tree or a plum tree or something of that sort. You recognize it by the fruit that it bears. If I'm bearing good fruit, then you're going to recognize But if I'm bearing bad fruit, you're going to recognize that too. If I'm flying off a hammer, getting mad, losing control, getting angry, and you're going to, you're going to re recognize that. And, but now to, 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 to the righteous, these are some things that, that we just do. We love the Word of God. That's why we go to church. That's why we're here tonight. You're not here just to look pretty. I'm not going to say that other part. You're here because you are hungry for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. God bless you. Thank you for letting me talk to you tonight. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. I would love to everyone to just come around the front and let's pray together tonight. I guess everybody here is a Christian, I suppose, and I just ask God that you want to that you just join us in prayer, praying for one another, praying for yourself. God, that help me, Lord Jesus, to be that Christian that Pastor talked about. 
in Jesus' name. Thank you.